entering position. Fire at will. Move it. Got one. Go, go, go.
My name is Dr. Winston Cray. I have been here since the beginning. My life's work has been to untangle the mysteries buried within the DNA of man and the others. To fulfill a pact and in turn become the linchpin for a new world order. Circumstances have changed. For the uninitiated, I am Mr. White. My real name is unimportant. I am the facilitator of Dreamland. Yes, the maker of dreams. I like that. It's poetic. I have sacrificed my very life to reveal these secrets. The experiments I have conducted over the years have taken their toll on my mortal coil. Science has at last failed me, as I am unable to heal my body. But my mind is still active, and it shall serve me to the end. I have done what I have done, so my work will not be in vain. 
It shall live through the ages, and I shall be remembered through it. But I take credit for only what I have achieved here, deep in the bowels of this institution. The work was vast. I first met Dr. Winston Cray during the Second World War. His brilliance in early DNA research earned him a leading role in developing biochemical weapons. The success of the Manhattan Project was inconsequential compared to the success we achieved. But our projects were never approved for moral implications. So unbeknownst to Dr. Cray, I engaged in several experiments of my own in the Midwest. Oh, the horrors I inflicted led to so many wonderful discoveries. But then the alien craft crashed in Roswell, and things took an interesting twist. When I discovered the biochemical marvels hidden in the one called Edgar, I sent Dr. Cray to work immediately. The moon landings nearly four decades ago were part of a misdirection by our government to confuse the public regarding alien encounters. We've certainly been to the moon, but the mysteries and horrors found there would never make for quaint historical quotations. Working with the greys, as they are called, has been invigorating. The staff is scared to death of them, owing in part to an incident where a linguistic coordinator accidentally bumped into one during an early negotiation. The man's face was quickly and neatly torn from his skull. I could swear I saw him register surprise in what was left of his eye sockets. And yes, it's true. Part of the pact gives them human subjects to experiment on, the results of which are quite often gruesome. But I still find them a fascinating and brilliant species. Spontaneous human combustion was an ill-conceived notion pursued by a sector of the scientific community here. Their early testing on pigs made the laboratories reek of burnt bacon. The human test subjects smelt even more repugnant. I was most grateful when that line of research was abandoned. But there is an interesting side note to that experiment. The urban legend of a man drugged by strangers later waking up in a tub of ice missing his kidney or liver or whatnot. That arose from early test subject failures that were inadequately disposed of. It has always been the goal of our organization to do what's best for mankind. The pact with the Greys simply pushed up the timeline. Those put in power by us Presidents, prime ministers, religious figures, and nobility sometimes get greedy. However, an assassin's bullet, or the delightfully degenerative effect of the many diseases in our control, usually takes care of that. The claims that the Bible holds a secret mathematical code that prophesied world events. That was initiated by a group of scientists who got inebriated one evening and thought it would make a good practical joke. Crop circles were another one of that crew's pranks. The after-hours entertainment here is extremely limited, and this sort of puerile behavior regrettably occurs from time to time. Some have called our plans a Luciferian conspiracy. But they will not say such things after the coming of the new guard. They will hold their tongues. Not because they have had a change of heart, but because... <laughs> well, because they will already have rotted out from the inside. The chips we've implanted in the majority of the population under the guise of vaccinations allow us to watch the watchers. Now, how could anyone say the pact was a bad thing? Remote viewing was a promising avenue of research that failed to live up to its initial potential. 
harnessing psychic abilities to spy on one's enemies has a provocative lure. But test subjects were wildly erratic with their results. Those who showed more consistent abilities were, in my opinion, inadequately trained, and the program was eventually discontinued. The technology we've been able to create as a result of the pact helps everyone. Our embedded chips in cell phones allow us to easily record conversations around the globe. Nanofibers woven into currency let us monitor the world's money wherever it goes. And we've placed monitoring devices the size of pinheads in most generic light fixtures. <laughs> this enables us to gather surveillance in the homes of the average American. And let me tell you, the things they do in the privacy of their own homes is far more disturbing than anything found here at Dreamland. As for my own work, it has always been the primary focus of Area 51. And these other diversions, black helicopters, cow mutilations and the like, have been the pastime of those unable to grasp the importance of my research. What we have created made the world we have today. It is only natural for us to control it. People simply do not understand what it takes for them to safely eat their hamburgers, see their television shows, drive their cars. It's a dangerous world, which is why the pact is of such immense benefit to us. It offers us a delightful weapon that causes epidemic mutation and destruction of our enemies. And the masses can sleep at night, nary a care. Bioweapon engineering requires finesse to manipulate both the pathogen and the population in a way that accomplishes the desired effect. It necessitates extensive lab work, followed by a series of controlled study groups. One such example of a localized control group was the 1976 experiment in a Philadelphia hotel. We were able to successfully introduce the pathogen, which became commonly known as Legionnaire's disease. It became the model for more complex experiments released into larger population groups, such as HIV and the SARS virus. Ebola has been the most virulent of our population-tested experiments and the most difficult one to keep in check. The crowning jewel of the pact, truly, is what Dr. Cray calls the infection carrier. Edgar's biochemistry held the key. I don't claim to understand the specifics. But the result is magnificent. Death has never been more beautiful. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as the World Health Organization, act as our preliminary survey team, gathering statistics and data of the virulence of the pathogens we have released. They also monitor established outbreak parameters, so the pathogens remain under our direction. These organizations were exceedingly useful in the mid-90s when the loss of several test rats who migrated into New Mexico and Arizona created a scare of hunter virus. They were able to capture the rats and return them to us while downplaying to the general public the immediate threat. The end result of these controlled experiments was to be the resurgence of bubonic plague and smallpox to create a pandemic, allowing the government to control the surviving population with considerable ease. But these experiments with earthly viruses ran concurrent with my long-term research into alien pathogens. The difficulty of unlocking the alien mitochondria was a continual disappointment to me until May 17th. 2002. It was on that day that I discovered it replicates through binary fission with an accelerated incubation period. I realized that if I attenuated the incubation period, I would be able to control the growth of the mutagens. 
Since then, I've been able to easily manipulate the alien DNA and hybridize it with human DNA. These experiments have given rise to my greatest innovation, a living, breathing, unstoppable organism I call the infection carrier. Others refer to it simply as the weapon. I will not allow others to desecrate my work with their myopic agenda. I will stop them with the weapon that they conspire to use against me. The world will not forget Dr. Winston Cray. When I was first assigned to Hazmat Team Bravo, I thought Ramirez was the kind of by-the-book military who resented babysitting a team of lab rats. But mission after mission, Ramirez proved he deserved our respect. Not because of the bars on his shoulder, but because he respected us and the work we did. He was our captain, and we would have followed him anywhere. Once, after cleaning up a hot zone in Bisbee, Arizona, Crispy and I had to spend 10 days in quarantine. By day three, I wanted to punch him in the face. By day seven, I did. In the dust-up, I slammed my head against the table, a concussion and 17 stitches. Since we were in quarantine, Crispy had to patch me up. It took me another week to recover, and Crispy stayed with me the entire time and didn't say a word. McCann and I went to a strip club, and he actually brought a book. I, I gave a stripper 50 bucks to take it from him and put it somewhere, you know, interesting. She did. McCann didn't even blink. He just asked her not to lose his place. Later, I asked him if he got the book back. He grinned and shrugged, and he, he said, uh, he said that chapter four would never be the same. The tides of history have left me little choice. And once again, science will require the sacrifice of the insignificant. In 47, we had a chance. There was a pact made for the greater good. Today it will be broken. It's a shame, really, that progress must take such a step back. This place was quarantined. You gotta be kidding me. What the?
was supposed to be a routine mission. We go in, identify the biohazard, clean, and get out. We'd experienced hot zones before. We've had to use force before. This, this was different. The drop location was different. Very different. Government conspiracies, secret weapon testing, aliens. I didn't believe any of it. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to encounter. This is my story, my journey. Major Bridges, Has Team Bravo reporting for duty. Have you been able to establish communication with Has Team Delta? Captain, you and your team need to suit up now. You're going in. Oh, I need you to stick close to me. They do things a little differently here. This is Area 51, after all. I want every square inch of this base searched. We've got an unauthorized agent running around loose here. He's compromised the elevator and blew up that transport truck. There's no telling what he'll try to destroy next. Most of our men are down below, leaving us understaffed. Ramirez, I know this isn't your line of work. But I need you and your team to help in the search. Okay, men. We'll break into two groups. Go, go with McCann. Me and Crispy will handle the copter bay. Let's roll. We gotta search the shooting range area. Man, what is going on? Government's gotta be in way over their heads here. This is some scary biotech. Captain, Cole got the guy, and we're coming in. We'll send a team to recover the body. Don't bother. There's nothing here. I'll explain when I get there. Out. At least we protected that truck he was after. Wonder what it's carrying that's so important. As we descended into the base, I realized just how large it was. Everywhere we looked, we saw secrets. Spy planes, banned weapons, and a lot of scared people. The virus was designed to hide in its host. Those infected began to mutate in four hours. With their loss of humanity, they gained in strength. The command staff thought they had responded fast enough that the protocols had worked, that the virus was contained. The government had no choice but to respond with extreme measures. When we finally arrived, it was almost with a sense of relief to start the mission, to do something, anything, meant an opportunity to forget what we just witnessed. The scientists who work at Dreamland are rumored to be some of the most brilliant minds in the world. They must have seen everything. Hell, they probably created everything. And yet they're terrified of what's beyond those doors. The doors I'm about to open. What was that? Look sharp. You've... You've got to help me. Let me out. Come on. Come on. No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> Then you must proceed with your objective. That's bullshit! McCann's dead! Did you miss that part? 
Crispy! Your insertion point has been overrun. There is no going back. You need to keep moving. Roger that, Command. Bravo. What the Ow. hell? We're leaving McCann? Crispy, we don't have a choice. We need to keep moving. The quicker we do this, the sooner we're all out of here. Stay focused. I hate leaving McCann behind, but I know we have to move on. If we don't stay focused, we'll become part of the body count. God only knows what the hell that thing was. I grieve for McCann, but I can't help thinking. Command, this is Bravo. We've hit Blue Sector. We're waiting for their orders. Bravo, this is Command. Team Delta uploaded a sit rep to the comm center, but the net's down and we can't access it. We need that report. I am transmitting the coordinates to the comm center. If Delta is no longer at that location, retrieve their sit rep and report in. Roger, Command. Bravo out. Okay, team. You heard the Major. Find that comm center. <laughs> I'm always surprised by man's ability to survive even the most hopeless of circumstances. We lost McCann, but we each got stronger to make up for it. If we can hook up with Delta Team, me, Ramirez, and Crispy stand one hell of a chance of making it out of here alive. We've got to find our way through here. Can you show us the best way? The controls are upstairs, but we're not having much luck getting to them. Cold, find your way into that control. Clear the room now! Go! Take cover! Move it, move it! Emergency fire doors are now closing. Oh, the fire Eva doors! Oh, son of a bitch! Ugh, we are screwed with the capital F! Shut up, Crispy! There's got to be an override switch for the... My suit's fucked. I, I gotta get out of this. It's hard to breathe. Call! Help me! McCann, Ramirez, Crispy. We'd been on a hundred missions together. They didn't deserve to die like this. No one deserves to die like this. I'm happy to see a familiar face. <laughs> I'd be happy to see a lot more than one. We got blindsided. Some kind of uh, creature kept us pinned down here. Creature? That was an alien, Lieutenant. Aliens or not. We need to get those artillery turrets loaded to stop the next one. Here they come again. Cold. What the hell was that thing? I don't know, but it could have been the same thing that killed my team. We better get out of here. with this place. Command, this is Has Team Delta. Come in. Has Team Delta, this is Command. Go ahead. My team is dead. Cole and I are headed topside.
blood runs dark and diseased. Your weak, insignificant shell turns against you. Find the anti-mutagen, and you may find a better death. Better death. Is there such a thing? I have to be hallucinating. Madness must be a side effect of the virus. I know this much. Chu is dead. But as long as I'm still breathing, there's nothing else but to follow that voice. My time is precious. You must find Dr. Cray. Only he can prevent your descent into madness. Find the mutagen, and I will ensure Cray finds you. virus. Do you feel your lungs burning? You need to come to me quickly. Take care. The infection can take you over. The antitoxin has only provided you with temporary comfort. As your condition deteriorates, you will lose control of your humanity. So hurry, Mr. Cole, if you want to live. The mutation takes hold. I hunger to consume my enemies. They become nothing but fuel for me. I try not to use its power, but I must. If I am to choose between mutation and death, the choice becomes increasingly clear. Hmm. The latter stages of the virus makes the subject more agile and aggressive. A perfect tool for spreading the infection. But that doesn't last long. Not long enough to spread the virus. The cycle then continues through its contagious corpse. A breeder of yet more virus spreading children. Someone from Topside. No matter. Our soldiers will take care of you. But he's been infected. Even better. Yes. Even better. Should our guest have some company? Yes. How appropriate. Mr. Cole, the soldiers of the Illuminati are destroying the base, removing the evidence of their existence and the pact they made so long ago. If they destroy the elevator power conduit, you will be unable to reach my lab and receive your cure. Stop them, then find me. Mr. Cole, you will find the power conduit further down the hallway. The forces of the Illuminati are near. You must stop their treachery. Excellent, Mr. Cole. There may yet be hope. Hurry along. My lab is well defended for now. But dark forces are beginning to trouble me. I await your arrival. Cray. He dangles a carrot in front of me. Promise of a cure if I save him. He better be for real. This thing I've become, I don't know how much more I can take. The Dark Soldiers have blocked your path. Work your way through the maintenance areas and find my lab. Mr. Cole, the enemy's destructive efforts have been all too effective. The containment tubes have become unstable and must be shut down.
hurry, Mr. Cole. A malfunction would be catastrophic. constant duel between mutant and human is taking its toll on me. Being a minion of Dr. Cray is getting old, fast. My body aches. I'm losing control. Cray has to have that cure for me. I need control. Oh, this is bad. The mutants, they are awake. So someone, someone should do something. Not safe, not safe. Ah, I don't think you should go in there. What did the doctors say? You are his friend. You must be scanned. Oh, the doctor wants you scanned. You must go. Dr. Cray was never a perfect specimen, flawed at best. The human elite will have their weapon. You must find me and continue what is to be undone. Are you worth my time? I think I understand Dr. Cray's fascination with me. He was looking to master the link between human and alien DNA. But he never came close until the infection inside me. For some reason, the mutagen reacts differently. It's evolved further than even he... The contagion that discharges from your body, it seeks life. Its purpose, to infect the next host. The chain of death prevails. McCann had a theory about everything. What would he say about the horrors that surround me? The horror I have become. I have come this far, and I can see the beginning of the end. But whose end will it be? I'm telling you, I don't know the codes. They're automatically changed at a level four lockdown. McCann talked about cover-ups, but I always thought the government was too inept for hoaxes this complex. In this den of lies, will I ever find the truth? Does it matter? It all seems so pointless now. Our enemy hides with the machinery of deception. It's this deceit that might draw our last breath. The vision of the infected can help you see things unseen. And we have acquisition of signal. Apollo 15, Houston standing by. Your ability to survive has been unfortunate. Dr. Cray betrayed us and released the weapon. But it will not stop us from completing the pact. You will not be leaving this facility alive. They think they can fool us with our consequence. This new world order. My mind grows clearer. I know what needs to be done. It's time for a new reality. Your caution is correct. The dark forces have begun to gather. The countdown to ascension has begun. Soon the pact will birth its unholy child.
anger. I feel it coursing through my body. I'm becoming a pawn in a war between giants. My life, I want it back. I need control. stop the elites and their unholy pact with my kind. You must seek out the departing vessel and destroy it. If it escapes with its deadly cargo, your world will perish. Ethan Call, you must now play your part. Go now. Leave this hell and save your world. But no, my blood binds you to me forever. World annihilation. Is that what we deserve? I don't think so. It's my turn now to finish the deal. Send them a message they won't forget. There's a calmness when you're in the presence of these aliens, but you'd be an idiot to trust them. They like talking with gestures. I'd like to talk to them with this cannon. I don't know who's more guilty for this carnage, the aliens or the humans who agreed to the pact in the first place. I've come too far to back down now.
think and I can't believe that this is the world I now know. A world where monsters exist. This maglev once took me to the truth. And now I hope it brings me to my destiny. For Sartre once said, hell is other people. He was only half right. My mind and body have been altered beyond reason. I don't know who or what I am anymore. We came here to rescue a small group of men. We failed. I failed. But their sacrifices may have saved mankind for now. <laughs> 